Hi, I'm Larry Whitmer. Welcome to another Random Act of Anatomy. I'm here in my study at home because it's still the coronavirus quarantine. But I wanted to show you a little bit about a project we've got going on on variation in the brain structure in turkeys. Um, this obviously isn't a brain. What this is is actually a 3D printed brain endocast. And an endocast is basically uh, a representation or a cast of the inner surface of the bony brain cavity. We got it by running this very skull uh, through the Ohio University micro CT scanner. And then an undergrad in our lab, Anna Brandt, used software to digitally isolate and extract the brain endocast. And I could try to show you what the structure is like with this thing, but it's pretty small. So I 3D printed one life size, but I also 3D printed one way bigger, which gives us a better chance to see what's going on. This is almost person sized. So um, the good news for us is that the neural tissue, the brain tissue in birds pretty much fills the bony brain cavity. So the structure of the endocast is a pretty fair reflection of the surface anatomy of the, of the brain of birds. And fortunately, turkeys are pretty representative of birds in general. So uh, we can look at the different parts of the bird brain, such as the telencephalon, which has these two large cerebral hemispheres, which indeed are pretty enlarged in most birds. A really interesting part of the cerebrum are these structures, which you can see really nicely in this top view. These swellings here called the volst. And the volst is a, an area of primary integration of sensory, particularly visual information, but also other kinds of information as well. It turns out that the structure of the volt is similar in many ways to the mammalian neocortex. And lots of labs, including our own, are really interested in the evolution of the volt in the line leading to birds. Other parts of the telencephalon include the uh, olfactory bulbs here in the front, which are pretty modest in turkeys. And indeed, they're pretty small in most birds because the primary sense in, in, of, in, in birds is not the sense of smell, but rather the sense of vision. And indeed, these structures right here, the optic lobes, which we can see pretty nicely here in this ventral view, the optic lobes are quite enlarged in, in most birds. Um, the optic lobes are uh, part of the primary visual pathway, the tectofugal pathway. And it turns out that the relative size of the optic lobes does actually correlate with the relative importance of visual information for a particular bird species. Other features we can see, we can see the, the pituitary uh, gland right in there. We can also see this area here, which is the brain stem, which is associated with basic housekeeping functions like heart rate and breathing rate in all vertebrates. If we come to the back part of the brain here, we can see this structure, which is called the cerebellum, which is associated with coordinating motor activities. It's pretty large in birds, and which makes sense because they're flying organisms. We can also see this part of the cerebellum here. We can see it in top view pretty nicely as these two little ear-like structures here called the flocular lobes. And the flocular lobes are associated with coordinating information on head turning and positioning of the neck and coordinating that with, eye, with the eye muscles to allow stabilization of, of an image on the retina, which is important for flying animals as well as for predatory and other kinds of, of animals. And so we can see lots of attributes about the structure of the bird brain just by looking at an endocast. Uh, although we're kind of interested in turkeys, we're really interested in what turkeys can tell us about other kinds of dinosaurs, extinct dinosaurs living in deep time. Because we can observe birds, we can relate the structure of the brain to their behaviors. And so the hope is, by looking at the endocasts of birds, we can also then interpret the endocasts of extinct dinosaurs to give us a window into their behavior, a glimmer of what was going on inside their heads. And so with that, I'm Larry Whitmer. This was another random act of anatomy. Please be safe. Thanks.